Do you believe right now that the teapot is flying through space? What's your prior probability on that? I don't think that we gotta give you a prior probability, bro. I mean, as far as Russell Teapot goes, there's not a, a teapot with Russell's name on it out there or anything that Russell could really assign to being a, a teapot uh, that he put in space or anything like that, especially considering that it was a thought experiment, a philosophical thought experiment meant to show the burden of proof to religious people. It's not serious. You have no evidence. There is no evidence that it's flying through space. You have no evidence. So what's your prior probability? Teapots just don't fly through space. Our NASA isn't going to do that. Elon Musk, have not heard that Elon Musk has decided he's gonna get all into launching teapots into outer space. Now, now uh, I, I do agree that uh, everything that he's saying is a reasonable reason to not believe that there's a teapot flying or orbiting around the sun. Like. Uh, NASA is not going to put any kind of time or energy into it, although uh, maybe one of the astronauts could get a little quirky about it and throw a teapot out there just because they're assholes or something. But saying that NASA hasn't put any energy into launching a teapot into orbit around the sun, I feel like is a reasonable thing. Uh, Elon Musk, we haven't directly heard of him putting one up there. So, I mean, the, the fact that there's no evidence that a teapot was launched in orbit around the sun is a good reason to not believe in the teapot. I I totally agree with this, but it's also the same kind of reasoning I use for your God. There's no evidence to suggest that your God exists, so therefore, I don't believe in your God just like you don't believe in a fucking teapot. For all the things that we know and understand about our world and our culture and how things work and space and everything, the probability is incredibly low because of a prior probability we bring into it, not because we're judging it just based off of itself, right? It's ludicrous. And so it has a very low probability as we think about those kinds of things. Those kinds of things. It's not the lack of evidence that it's there that makes it a low probability. It's what we're being asked to consider, our prior probability that comes into the question itself. Flying spaghetti monster, same thing. It's not a lack of evidence that the flying spaghetti monster exists. You don't have to know anything about the flying spaghetti monster. And from what I've shared with you today, many of you are easily able to say the flying spaghetti monster does not exist. But you see, that would be unreasonable at that point. Like if you have no idea about the, the flying spaghetti monster. So what he's talking about is, is, is kind of a starting position. Uh, until somebody tells you about a flying spaghetti monster, then uh, there's no reason to think about a flying spaghetti monster existing. You effectively don't believe in it. And once you say, hey, there's a flying spaghetti monster out there that loves you and his noodly appendages keeps you pinned to the earth. And those that are shorter are more loved by the spaghetti monster than those that are taller. So, I mean, you could present to somebody a flying spaghetti monster, but then you would need to ideally back up that with evidence. And you can use the same kind, quality, and quantity of evidence for this flying spaghetti monster as you would for the Abrahamic God. The flying spaghetti monster has its own book that lays out its doctrines, its history, and all that kind of stuff, has its own creation myth and everything like that. You could argue in the exact same way for the uh, flying spaghetti monster as you can for this dude's God, but yet he's acting like, oh, nobody has a problem disbelieving in the flying spaghetti monster, but is that a reasonable reason to disbelieve in the flying spaghetti monster? Just you, uh, I mean, I do think that it's reasonable not to believe in it because nobody's presented evidence for it, but the thing is, is that if you present evidence for it and you compare that to the Abrahamic God, it's the same kind, quality, and quantity as their God. So they're in a, he's in a predicament here. Why? Because we know that organic life cannot just sprout up and spaghetti become a living deity. We just, that's just not how things work. Even if you want to say flying spaghetti, we know that spaghetti is an aerodynamic. I mean, how do you know that? I mean, baseballs aren't necessarily aerodynamic, but I mean, a flying spaghetti monster could be aerodynamic in some kind of way. Uh, how do you know that, uh, you know, life can't form into noodles? We we actually have evidence of, of uh, noodly looking things existing on this earth. I mean, there's uh, eels, Eels are kind of noodly. There's, um, the, uh, let's see, tapeworms are noodly. So I'm just getting ramen noodles now. Here's a here's a sea, sea creatures that look delicious like Italian dishes. 
ranked. This is from from Vice, so you know it's good. Tomato clownfish. Uh, no, not that's uh, wrong. Sea cucumbers are kind of noodly. You don't know about that. I'm just saying, like, there's a lot of noodly creatures out there that. Uh, so to say that, oh, we know that organic life can't pop up that looks like a noodle. Oh, you know, I didn't even bring this up. What about a fucking snake? That's a nope noodle if I've ever seen one. But in any case, my point is, is that he's not actually substantiating these claims. He's just piling more ad hoc claims on top of each other and claiming that they're evidence for this other thing. And so he's just making a, a, a harder case for himself. Uh, he would need to prove that uh, noodly organisms can't exist or don't exist, uh, which that's obviously wrong. Uh, and then he would also need to prove that noodly organisms are not aerodynamic in some kind of way. They would have to prove that they can't fly in some kind of way. Like, uh, true, we don't have any evidence uh, for any of that, uh, for like an actual flying spaghetti monster. So it's unreasonable for you to believe in it, true. But he's saying we know it doesn't exist. He would have to prove that. That's a positive claim. Just because I don't believe in the flying spaghetti monster doesn't mean that I'm saying that, uh, you know, the flying spaghetti monster monster doesn't exist. It's just that we don't have any evidence to suggest that he does, right? This is the same fucking argument for God. Uh, by the way, as stupid as that is, I mean, there are all kinds of things that play into your prior probability that the flying spaghetti monster does not exist. You don't need any evidence to make that determination. You do need evidence that he definitely doesn't exist. What you don't need evidence for is to not believe in the flying spaghetti monster. Uh, but if you were to say the flying spaghetti monster definitely doesn't exist, you would need evidence to prove that. This is why I'm still an agnostic atheist and not like a hard atheist, because I can't prove that uh, a, a God in general doesn't exist. Like it exists outside of reality. There's no way for me to actually prove whether or not some deity is out there jerking it off to the universes that he created. I guess that's possible in the grand scheme of things, but there's also no reason for me to believe that. There's, uh, there's no reason for me to believe in some magical creature far the universe out. There, there's no reason for me to believe that, so I don't believe in it. That doesn't mean that I know it doesn't exist. Just like for him, you would need evidence to say, I know that doesn't exist. You would need evidence for that. What you don't need evidence for is to say, I don't believe that. It's a low probability. Nothing to do with evidence because of the prior probability of understanding that you have about any particular subject. <laughs> The, the prior knowledge that you have about any fucking subject proves that the flying spaghetti monster doesn't exist. So you have an intimate and extensive knowledge about fucking boxcars that disproves the flying spaghetti monster. I feel like everything that he's saying right now, flying spaghetti monster could be replaced with his God and he would come away as a hard atheist knowing that his God doesn't exist. The probability that something exists depends on the item that we're talking about. They're not equal. It's not apples for apples. It's not identical discussions. And a teapot flying through space is not an equal discussion of the God of the universe. It's not meant to be. The, the philosophical thought experiment of Russell's teapot is just meant to be an example of how you need proof for the claims that you're making. It's an example in the burden of proof. People making positive claims shoulder the burden of proof. If you're saying my God exists, then you shoulder the burden of proof in proving that your God exists. You shouldn't expect people to just believe your God exists because you say it exists. I mean, if that were the case, then you should also believe in every other God in including the flying spaghetti monster. Though some might try to claim that it is, rational, basic, logical discussion will prove immediately that that is not the case. The absence of evidence is not evidence of absence. So I, 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 I like that he says that here and he's advocating for this because this can be turned around on him for the flying spaghetti monster. Because he says no evidence is needed to know that the sp flying spaghetti monster doesn't exist. Well, then he says, oh, absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. This could easily be turned around on him for any other claim. Like uh, the absence of evidence of the gods in, in polytheism, just because there's no evidence of them doesn't mean that they don't exist. So I guess the people that are heathens that subscribe to uh, heathen religions, I guess they would uh, be justified in believing in their God. And he's arguing uh, about this 
from a very Christian perspective. So he's saying, well, just because there's no evidence of, of our God in the way that you need it to be, that doesn't mean he doesn't exist. It could also work for Russell's teapot. Just because there's no evidence of Russell's teapot doesn't mean that Russell's teapot isn't there. He runs into a really big issue with this particular statement, and I don't think he understands exactly how bad of a problem that he has. 